In this example, we'll learn how to write the most reasonable Lewis structure for a given polyatomic ion. The question asked us to write the most reasonable Lewis structure for the hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate ion, HCl3-. The first thing we need to do is find the total number of valence electrons in this ion. A hydrogen atom has one valence electron, a carbon atom has four, and three oxygen atoms contribute three times six or eighteen valence electrons. This time, when we have an ion, in order to find the number of available electrons, we have to consider the charge on the ion. The net charge on this ion is negative one. When the charge is negative 1, it means we add one electron to the valence electrons. So the total number of electrons available is 1 plus 4 plus 18 plus 1, which equals 24. The next thing we need to calculate is the total number of electrons needed to satisfy the octet rule. Hydrogen needs two electrons to achieve the noble gas stability of helium. Carbon needs eight electrons for a stable octet and three oxygen atoms need 3 times 8 or 24 electrons to give them stable octets. So the total number of electrons needed to satisfy the octet rule is 2 plus 8 plus 24, which equals 34 electrons. The next step is to calculate the number of bonding electrons. We calculate the number of bonding electrons by taking the number of electrons needed to satisfy the octet rule, which is 34, and subtracting the number of available electrons, which is 24. So we have 34 minus 24, which equals 10 bonding electrons. Since each bond needs two electrons, this means that the ion has a total of five bonds. The next step is to calculate the number of non-bonding electrons in this ion. We do that by taking the number of available electrons, which is 24, and subtracting the number of bonding electrons, which is 10. 24 minus 10 gives us 14 non-bonding electrons. So the ion HCO3- has 5 bonds and 14 non-bonding electrons. We arrange the ion so that the most electropositive ion other than hydrogen, which is carbon, is in the center of the ion. So this is a probable structure. At this point, when we're dealing with an ion, we put square brackets around the ion, and the charge on the ion is negative 1. So we show that on the top right, just outside the brackets. Next, we need to explore different ways of adding five bonds to this ion. We start by adding a bond between each pair of atoms. This takes care of four bonds out of a total possible five. Next, we'll place a double bond between the O atom on the left and the carbon atom. We'll call this structure number one. In structure two, we'll place the double bond between the carbon atom and the oxygen atom on the right side. And in structure three, we'll place the double bond between the carbon atom and the oxygen atom on the bottom. You can check to see that all three of these structures have five bonds each. What we need to do now is add the 14 non-bonding electrons to each structure so that its atoms, other than hydrogen, have stable octets. We add one lone pair to this oxygen atom to give it a stable octet. Remember, each bond contributes two electrons to the octet, so three bonds connected to the oxygen contribute six. Adding the two non-bonding electrons in this lone pair gives a total of 8, which is a stable octet. We add three lone pairs to this oxygen to give it a stable octet. The six non-bonding electrons around the atom plus the two in the bond adds up to 8. And the three lone pairs are added to this oxygen to give it a stable octet. If you count the dots, you'll see that we now have accounted for all 14 non-bonding electrons. Now we can add the 14 non-bonding electrons to the atoms in structure 2 to give them stable octets. We add the required number of lone pairs to these three oxygen atoms, like this. 
You can check each atom to see that all the atoms other than hydrogen have stable octets. You can always pause the video if you like. Now we add the 14 non-bonding electrons to structure 3 by adding the required number of lone pairs to each oxygen atom. Again you can check to see that each atom other than hydrogen has a stable octet. At this point we need to determine which structure is the most likely Lewis structure for the bicarbonate ion HCO3-.